Right, so you join me here today at Royal Berkshire Fisheries. We're fishing Lake Free today, which is our match lake here. And what I'm going to be showing you today is a simple cage feeder approach. We're fishing on peg 52 today. It's quite a wide peg. It's maybe 35, 40 meters wide. So obviously we can't fish a pole to a far bank. So the best way of presenting small parcels of bait to that far bank is a cage feeder. The brilliant thing about a cage feeder is how it's not selective. We're going to be catching all kinds of fish on it, hopefully. Uh, we got a chance of catching carp, skimmers, roach, F1s. Primarily though, it is going to be F1s today. It's a cold day, it's a bit stormy, but the weather's all over the place. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you a few small things that I think make a big difference. And this will hopefully keep fish coming to your net at this time of year. So let's have a look at the setup I'm going to use today. Firstly, the rod. It's a Signature Pro 10 foot 6 bottom feeder rod. Uh, it's a light action rod, but it's still got enough backbone that when I'm chucking it 35, 40 metres, I can keep the accuracy. Got eight pound line uh, down to an 010 MVR hook length and a size 18 hook. How I set my feeder rod up is I literally have a snap link swivel, free running up the line with a small cage feeder on. This is 25 gram and this just helps me keep the accuracy. If I was fishing any lighter a feeder, maybe a 10 or a 15, it would be quite hard to land in the same spot every time. On to where I'm actually chucking, I've got a big tree on the far bank, which is my marker. So if I can keep it in the same place, every time I drop on it, I know there's some grub in the area. Uh, like I said, size 18 hook. The only thing I do in terms of a setup to, to prevent tangles on a cage feeder is I have a small grip stop and then I have an inch and a half twizzled boom. All this twizzled boom does is kicks your hook length away from your feeder when you're reeling in. You see so many people reeling quick uh, on a normal feeder setup like a snap change feed or something like that and every time they reel in it's tangled. So to prevent this you just need a small twizzled boom twisted round 20 times that just kicks it away. So that's set up sorted. I'll quickly run you through my bait. Nice and simple yet again. Uh, I'm using the Ever Faithful Dynamite Cool Water Ground Bait, my favourite ground bait this time of year. And the only other two things I have on my bait table are micros and maggots. All I do is I take around a point or so of ground bait, put it into a bowl and put a pinch of micros, pinch of maggots in. I never add my bait to the whole load of ground bait that I've done because some days you want to add more bait, some days you want less going through your feeder. So doing it this way, I can tailor it to the day and it depends what the fish want on that particular day. That's the setup sorted, that's the bait gone through. So now we're going to see if we can catch some fish. Right, so we've been fishing for a couple of hours now. Uh, got a few F1s in there, having a good day so far. Weather's been a bit all over the place. We've had some strong winds, then the sun's come out, we've had a bit of rain. Uh, so it's really nice fishing this feeder because we've kept everything nice and accurate against that far bank. Uh, I wanted to touch on one thing that I see a lot of at this fishery and everywhere you go is the actual cast of the feeder. You watch so many people cast the feeder out and as soon as that hits the water, they lose all connection with it. 
it's not good because of you never know if your feeder's hit any obstacles on the way down, you don't know that your hook lengths away from your feeder. For all you know, your feeder's either hanging in a branch or it's landed in a big mess on the bottom. So what I do is as soon as that feeder hits the water, you just hold your rod tight against it and you can feel your feeder hit the bottom. This tells you what sort of bottom you're fishing on, whether it's silty, hard bottom, gravel, uh, but more importantly, I know that that feeder's on the bottom, my hook length's kicked away from it, and everything's presented perfectly. That's a very important tip, and it's something a lot more people should be doing. Right, so we've had a great day today, catching a load of F1s on this feeder. Uh, oi, found the last one up. Nice fish, good two and a half, three pound. Uh, yeah, like I said, caught a few. Maggot on the hook's been best by far, nice and simple. Beautiful F1. We'll put them in the net and we'll take a look, see what we got. So we've had a brilliant day today. As you can see, we've got 35, maybe even 40 pound of great big F1s, two and a half, three pounders, most of them. We had one lonely carp, this one just here. Uh, yeah, so everything's been caught on a cage feeder. Hope you've learned loads from the video. Hope these little tips and tricks will help you either at this venue or whatever venue you fish. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to Match Fishing Media for more content like this. So we're gonna slip these beauties back. <laughs>